Okay, in this video we're going to be deriving the uncertainty and the slope of a best fitting line uh, y equals mx with m or with the intercept b fixed at the origin. So in a previous video I derived uh, the equation for the actual slope which goes as the sum over all the points of uh, xi yi divided by the sum of the x values squared. And this is what we're going to use to do the derivation. But in lab, we've actually already seen that the uncertainty in the slope, we looked at it kind of conceptually, um, that it should be proportional to 1 over n, so that the more data points you take, the more certain your slope is. It should also be proportional to the chi-squared, um, so the sum of the squared residuals distance between the point and the line on average, so that values that are, are uh, data sets that have points really far away from the line are less certain than having them really close. And then it's inversely proportional to the average distance your points are along the x-axis, so the um, x squared values, so the points farther away from the origin are more, um, make for a better slope. Okay, so to do this derivation, um, there's a couple derivative um, tools that we need, and I'm going to actually derive those in a separate video. So for now, we're just going to kind of take them for granted. And if you want to know where it comes from, you can check out the third video. So uh, what we're using is just that if z is some function of a whole bunch of different variables, y1, y2, dot, 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 n of them, then the uncertainty in z squared, it's easier to work in squareds, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to go as the sum from 1 to n of the partial derivative, which is just like a regular derivative, um, derivative with respect to each of the y's times the uncertainty in each of those y values, and then squared. So that basically means take the derivative with respect to y1 times y1's uncertainty, that's just a 1 now, squared, plus the derivative with respect to y2 times the uncertainty in y2 squared, etc. Um, so the first thing we're doing, so our m looks like this. So we're going to be taking the deri um, derivative with respect to the y values, because those are the ones, the dependent variables are the ones that have the biggest uncertainty. Um, so first of all, let's just take, just to um, get us started, the derivative of xj, yj with respect to yj is going to just be xj. It's the first little piece. So if we expand this now to the partial derivative of all of m with respect to yj, um, then this denominator on the bottom is just going to come out because it doesn't depend on y at all. Uh, so we get 1 over the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi squared, and then times, so um, we're going to get a xj coming out of this, but the key here is that the um, if yj is not equal to yi at some point in the sum, then all of those drop out to zero, and the only thing we're left with is the single, we pick out the single xj. Okay. So, um, expanding this into our full formula now, the uncertainty in m squared is going to go as, and this is using this formula over here, it's going to go as the sum from j equals 1 to n of this derivative with respect to yj times the uncertainty in yj squared. And then subbing that in is going to give us the sum from j equals 1 to n of xj divided by the sum from i equals 1 to n xi squared. And that whole term is squared and then times the uncertainty squared. Okay, next thing we have to do is deal with this term here. And I'm going to go to a new page to do that. Okay, so when we derived the equation for the slope, we started out with a chi-squared um, that looks like this, yi minus m of xi, 
all squared. And what we didn't use were, um, we didn't actually incorporate the uncertainties in y. So in, in this derivation, we've sort of pretended that they don't exist. So instead, what we're going to do um, is look at our residuals. So when we take the difference between our data points and the line and plot them as a function of x, we get sort of this random, that's not random at all, random scatter of the data points around the line. Sure. And um, what this, this gives us a little bit of information. It, it sort of tells us that on average, the data point, the distance between the data points and the line um, ends up being, I mean, you can kind of draw out what that average is. And of course, that average distance is the chi-squared, um, this guy. So we can actually use chi-squared as a proxy for the uncertainties in y squared in this case. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to do. So we had our formula for the uncertainty was starting to look like this, j equals 1 to n of xj over the sum from i equals 1 to n xi squared, and that whole thing was squared, and then it was times the uncertainty, and now we're going to actually just put in um, the chi squared, and I'm going to use another index k now, just so that we keep all of these sums separate, k minus m of x k squared. Okay, let's do a little bit of um, house cleaning here. So the this sum on, on the bottom is a constant because this is summing over all of the n values, so that can actually come outside of the summation over j. So we've got 1 over this sum xi squared and that squared. And then we've got the sum over j's xj squared, and then we've got the separate sum over k's. So now all of these summations are different and separate. Um, but now that we've separated them, um, the in this case, the sum from j equals 1 to n of xj squared, because it goes through all of the data points that we have is the exact same as this sum of i's. And so these numbers, um, the i could be a j or the j could be an i because we're going through all of them. So that means that we're actually going to, uh, this one is going to cancel out with one of the two there. Um, and then similarly, um, this sum over k's could just as well be a sum over i's. So now we're going to just have 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n yi minus m of xi squared, and then that whole thing is divided by the last sum over x squareds over here. i equals 1 to n xi squared, um, and that's it. And of course we could have the extra 1 over n's in there, but they're going to just cancel out, so that's our equation. There we go.